Well, for many people, a timeshare may seem like the perfect option. Having a vacation home available only when you really want it and not having the burden of worrying about it the rest of the year. But our next guest says that timeshares may not be all they're cracked up to be. We are happy to be joined by one of our favorite Money Matters guests, Dave Ramsey, radio host of The Dave Ramsey Show. He joins us now from Tennessee. Dave, thanks for being here today. Well, thanks. It's good to be with you. Now, I know so many people who have either had timeshares or do have timeshares, my grandmother being one of them as well, and it seems like they don't always use it. Do you think that timeshares are a good investment or a bad investment? I think they're a crummy investment, and I recommend to my listeners never to buy a timeshare. And the reason is real simple. It's not an investment. An investment gives the idea that you could actually sell it. Mm -hmm. And you can't give the stupid things away once you own one of them. Uh, they're absolutely horrible. All you're doing is prepaying your hotel bill for the next 20 years right now in advance. And those of us that know anything about money know you'd be better off to put that money in an investment, and the investment would produce enough to pay your hotel bill. Yeah, and it certainly does lock you in, as my grandmother found out. Now, is this true for everyone, do you think? Or do you think that some people may love a timeshare, and that might be the way to go for them? Well, I think they like the use of the condo, and they like having a place that they can go to. This is the family thing. We'd go to this location every summer, and they like that. But families have done that for years simply by renting the lake house or renting the beach condo, and, and that can continue to be. And, but the problem is you are locked in, and some of the timeshare people give you the ability to trade back and forth, but even then, they're telling you where you can stay after you prepaid your hotel, and you are just stuck in these things. You cannot get rid of them. Uh, of the people that call the Dave Ramsey Show, I would say we have a 98% dissatisfaction with them, and, and, wow. and they're, they can't get rid of them. They're, they paid fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars 15000 $20,000, bucks. they are paying payments on them, and, and it's a mess in their lives. Why do you think it's so difficult to get rid of these things? And how do you go about it? I mean, is there any way to sell them? <laughs> well, there's no market for them. Nobody wants them. Do not go to one of the list services where you pay two or three or five hundred dollars up front to, to just get your name on a list because that's all that happens. They slap your offering on a list and you never hear from anybody. Uh, basically, we found a couple of things that work sometimes. I can't give you a lot of hope, but one is you can donate your timeshare to a, uh, a charity and the IRS says you can get a $5,000 tax write-off for doing that. And you may not be able to get anywhere near two or three thousand dollars for your timeshare and it'd save you that on your taxes to donate it. So donating it is one possibility. The other possibility is we've had some luck going back to the uh, the company that is selling the timeshares, offering that sales manager who is told not to sell used units, but offering him to sell it, at, we'll sell our unit at half and we'll pay you double commission. And basically, in a sense, bribing them into, use, into moving your used unit. And sometimes you're able to get them to do that. And it sounds like no matter what you do, you kind of are losing money here. It is a total consumption. When you write the check for a timeshare, if you write a check up front or if you borrow the money up front, you have spent that money. It's as if I just wrote a check and bought a hotel and it's gone. I mean, I bought a hotel room. When I, when I rent a hotel room, I, I've written a check and that money's gone. It's